welcome to my channel. Welcome to today's video. Today's video is going to be my December empties, which is crazy. It's just crazy. I'm not going to go into a huge rant about it, but it's crazy. So I have a huge bin here of all the stuff that I've used up in December. We're going to go over it all. So if you like empty videos, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't yet. Stick around. And let's just go over some of these products that I've been using in December. My thoughts on them. I have a lot of hair care, surprisingly. I really just finished up a lot of my hair care stuff. Exciting stuff. Let's just get started. If you've seen any of my empty videos, you know we kind of go by category around here. I start with the category I have the least amount, work my way up. So the one that I have the least amount is body care. And the only empty I have is this Bees Knees Lacquer Meringue. I have this in every single empties because I love it. And this is the Scent Kelpie. It's kind of hard to smell, but it's nice. I mean, it wasn't my favorite. It's not my top three scent from them, but this is kind of a, it's in between a bar soap and a liquid soap. A meringue is the perfect word. It's kind of like that frosting texture. It lathers really well. I really like these soaps. I just have so many of them backstocked that I'm trying to get through them. I usually have almost like two or three of these per empty, but I'm trying to get through my bar soaps as well. I don't put those in my empties because there's kind of nothing to show for it after I use bar soap, but I did go through one of these. I keep them by the kitchen sink. I keep them in the bathroom. I keep them everywhere. So I really recommend these. I really like them. I think that Bees Knees Lacquer might be officially closed now. They were talking about closing. The owner's just been going through some health struggles. I think she had like a surgery kind of coming up. So she closed shop for now. I don't know if you can get your hands on it, but if you can, I would recommend it. Now I have three more categories. I'm just debating which one I want to go through because they all kind of have like an equal amount. Let's go through skincare. So for skincare, first thing I have here is this gentle cream cleanser, and this is from Exuvians. I think that's how you say this. That so this is, how big is this? 7.2 fluid ounces. This took me quite a while to go through. And I'm gonna be honest, I hated every second of it. I just, I don't like this cleanser. I will not be repurchasing it. I went through it because I had it. It wasn't the worst cleanser I've had. I guess hating every second of it, that's a little dramatic. But this cleanser, it sounds nice. It feels nice. But every time I would wash it off, I just felt like it left a film on my skin and that's what I didn't enjoy about this. Other than that, it cleanses really nicely. It is a gentle cleanser. It says it's for sensitive to dry skin. I think it's perfect for my skin type, but for some reason, I just felt like I could never get all of it off of my skin. And that's the only reason why I just don't like this at all. Zero would not recommend. I'm not gonna repurchase that at all. Another thing I won't be repurchasing that I'm just glad to have out of my collection is this Mario Badescu, and this is the Witch Hazel and Rosewater Toner. I'm assuming this is like the small size. It still took me a very long time to get through. And now I can officially, with 100% certainty, say that I have no more Mario Badescu products in my collection, in my back stock to get through. I finally finished all of them. It was a point in time that this brand was just really hyped up. Everyone was talking about them, but I don't know for what reason. The ingredients are not great in here. It's not good for your skin. It didn't harm my skin, so I wanted to make sure I still used it up, but I wouldn't repurchase it. Really, it just does nothing. It does nothing and the ingredients aren't great. I mean, witch hazel, I don't mind. I like that ingredient, but other than that, like I just, I don't know why this was overhyped. It just really was. I have two moisturizers to go over that I went through. Let's start with this one. This is the Kula Refreshing Water Cream with sunscreen, just a little travel size here. How big is this? This is half a fluid ounce. And then I have the Coors Wild Rose Vitamin C Brightening Sleeping Facial. So I used this one during the day because it had SPF. I used this one at night because it was a sleeping facial. And I finally went through both of these. I did finish this one first. And this, the Coors, you know, I generally like their products. I really like their Greek yogurt cleanser. 
that's probably my top three all-time favorite cleansers but this was just lackluster there's nothing special about this i didn't feel like it did anything for my skin i honestly just kind of found myself wanting to get through it faster so i'd use it on my chest use it on my neck a lot of the times when i find myself doing that I know that I'm just trying to get through the product. I'm not really enjoying it. So I wouldn't repurchase this. Also, the the bottle is just like unnecessarily heavy for no reason. I can travel a lot, so I care about weight. I don't mind if it's like a nice jar. I just don't like it when it's heavy for no reason other than just being heavy. I wanna be able to travel with something, like I prefer something like this that's easy to travel with. That is not, it's too heavy for me, don't like it, would not repurchase it. This moisturizer, I actually really liked. This is the first Kula brand product that I've tried and liked it a lot, surprisingly. I did find it really moisturizing. I liked the fact that it had SPF in it. I still went in with SPF afterwards just because I felt like I should. This was a really great product. It was hydrating. It did everything it said. It was lightweight on the skin. It sunk in really fast. I didn't feel like it was abnormally greasy. Pretty surprised by this brand. And now I'm intrigued to just try more things out from them. Then two more skincare items to go over. This has been used and abused. I don't know if you can tell just from the jar. I'm gonna try and read up from this. This is the Andalou Naturals. And this is the Pumpkin Honey Glycolic Mask. So pumpkin is really good as a natural exfoliator. Honey is going to soothe. So really great combo mask. I had this for quite a long time. It took me a while to go through this. And it was okay. I love pumpkin enzyme masks. I think that they're great. Just there's one that I prefer over this. And that's the Rhonda Allison pumpkin mask. I don't know the official name of it. I just know it's from Rhonda Allison. And that one is fantastic. I love that skincare line. It's not one that's sold in stores. You really have to find it through like an esthetician. But if you have trouble with your skin, I used to struggle with acne from like 14 until about 21. I would say I had pretty bad acne. And Rhonda Allison, I swear, is what saved my skin. That cleared my skin up, and since then, I have had less sensitive skin, acne-prone skin. I don't know. Part of that's probably just getting older, but I am like 95% sure that that is what cleared my skin up because I was religious with it every single day. I had a full routine, and that is what got rid of just like, it was, it was pretty bad acne, so... That is why I just preferred that pumpkin mask over this one, but any kind of pumpkin enzyme mask, I really recommend. I think it's a great natural exfoliator and you have to be careful. Don't apply it for too long or you will just hurt your skin. Actually a very, very strong ingredient, so just be careful. If you're looking for a pumpkin mask though, that one is great. I still would highly recommend the Rhonda Allison over that one though. And then the last skincare item I have is the Youth to the People Dream Eye Cream. Now this is the full size. It's it's tiny. This is half a fluid ounce. This is probably my favorite eye cream. I do really enjoy it. The only thing is that you have to use very, very little. And I say that because I found myself using too much and I was breaking out right here, like right on the rim of my glasses here. You can even go back and see some videos where I'm talking about it and I couldn't pinpoint what was breaking me out. I thought it was my skincare and just my glasses resting on my face, but it was because of the eye cream and just applying too much that the product was really just sitting there. And yes, my glasses was like really pushing it in and that's what was causing me to break out but you need the teeniest, tiniest bit. I wish I could even show you, but it's empty, I can't. Just a little bit of a learning curve with this, but I would repurchase it. I first tried it in a sample sachet in one of my empties. If you go back, you'll even see I said, I really like this, I wanna purchase the full size. I did, I went through it and I really enjoy this. I will be repurchasing this again, just once I get through some of my stash of eye creams. Right now, this is beating all the other eye creams. We'll see what happens once I go through the rest of them, but number one, for sure. Now, as per usual, we're gonna go over fragrance. I have all my little minis here. I think that I have maybe like seven of these left and I'm completely done. After that, I only have travel sizes. So I've been working really hard this year to just get through all of my fragrance samples. I'm pretty proud of myself but I'm gonna try not to linger too long on each of these and just say yes or no on them. First I have is Valentino Born in Roma. 
This is a nice fragrance. I really like it. I'm not going to go over the notes, but I do really like Valentino fragrances. I have another Valentino fragrance that I bought that I really enjoy. So this is probably like on my list. If I was to buy a fragrance, I wouldn't say it's like top, top of my list. I would purchase this fragrance and I would enjoy it. The next one that I have is Paradox Prada. I already have this fragrance, so I know that I like it. I just went through the little travel size of it. And I also got that for my sister. She really likes that one as well. Next one I have is Armani Code. This is a men's fragrance and I didn't realize until the first time I used it, but I used it up anyways because I wanted to. And then I realized this is the cologne that my partner has. So I don't know how I didn't realize that when I sprayed it. I didn't. Sometimes I can be a little absent-minded, but it's very nice and I enjoy it on my partner. I have here the Tiffany & Co. perfume. I have the full size of this as well, somewhere back there if you can see it. So I do really like this fragrance. It is a leaning towards old lady though, like rich old lady. So if you're not into that kind of scent, don't get this. I think it's a very polarizing scent. It's not my favorite favorite. I'm glad that I have it, but you really, you really have to like a specific fragrance to like that. Then I have Victor and Rolf Bonbon Couture. So I do also have the Bonbon fragrance right back there. Kind of, can you see it? Yes. I don't have the Couture though. It's nice. I didn't really notice too much of a difference between the two. I like fragrance. I love fragrance actually, but I can't see my sense of smell can like pinpoint every single note, top, middle, late, bottom of the layers. So I didn't notice a difference between the Couture and the normal one. I would say they smell similar. I don't need both of them. Then I have Juicy Couture Viva La Juicy, and this is the bubbly one. This fragrance brings me back to high school. My best friend used to wear this fragrance. I feel like I need to eventually buy a Juicy Couture perfume just for memory reasons. It's on my list to do because it's a good memory for me. It does. It just reminds me of being 16, 17 and being over at my best friend's house using her perfume. I really like it and I do plan on repurchasing this. It just, it has good memories attached to it. Four more left. Next up, we have Lancome Idol Intense. I have the regular Idol. I can't notice the difference between the intense version and the non-intense version. I don't know the difference, but I do have this fragrance already. I don't have it out on display because it is one of the most annoying perfumes that I own. It, it is the most annoying perfume that I own. It can't, I'm not going to go get up and go get it, but you can't stand it upright. You have to lay it on its side. And I hate that because as you can see, like it wouldn't work if you lay it sideways. It's very weird because it's very slim packaging. I'm not going to go on a whole thing about it. It's just don't buy that perfume solely because the bottle is terrible. Then next up I have the Dior Miss Dior. I've gone through two full bottles of this fragrance. I love this fragrance. I have a mini of it right here. I have a mini of it. I plan on probably repurchasing a full size of it eventually, but it's not high up on my list because I have gone through two bottles of it so far. I kind of want to finish a few more that I have before buying the full size, but I do, I love that perfume. It's probably one of my top three favorite fragrances of all time. It's a great fragrance. If you love just floral feminine perfumes, it is the ultimate feminine perfume to me. I can't say enough good things about it and I will always have it in my collection. And then last two here. These are both from Chanel. So I have the number one to Chanel and then I have the number five to Chanel. Now, I didn't know, I mean, I should have known, but I didn't know that Chanel had like other fragrances that weren't just the number five. I thought they had the number five. I know they have the whole Chance line. I know they have like the Coco Mademoiselle, but I didn't realize they had like a number one, a number two, a number three, a number four, a number five. I had no idea. So number five is okay, but number one, which is this one, is way better than number five. Number five kind of also gives me old lady vibes, kind of similar to the Tiffany. Number one is fresh, it's floral, it's bright, it's energetic. I am absolutely gonna be picking this up over the number five for sure. It's not, I mean, it's not high up on my list. I have too many fragrances on my list to like give you a number on what order I would purchase this in. 
but the next Chanel perfume that I purchase is going to be this number one. I like it that much. I think it's great. And if you didn't also know that Chanel doesn't just have the number five, they have a whole bunch of numbers. Now you know, go to Chanel shop if you have one near you and just get some samples of it because I think that number five is a little bit overhyped now that I've smelled number one. I'm down to my last category, which is hair care. Let's breeze on through this. So I have a shampoo and conditioner. This is the Pureology Hydrate for dry color treated hair. I don't have color treated hair. I don't dye my hair. It's just too much maintenance for me. I don't even want to go down that path of colored hair. So I don't, but I wouldn't say, I would say my hair is maybe a little dry. However, I really liked the shampoo and conditioner. I actually looked to see how much it was to repurchase it. And I might repurchase the full size bottles of these. This leaves my hair feeling very hydrated, exactly what it claims. That's the reason why I'm gonna repurchase this probably. I have a few more shampoo conditioners, the full size ones to get through. This is definitely on my list though, to buy the full size versions of these. I think that Pureology is definitely more on the expensive side, so I don't know how soon I will. I'm not gonna forget about this though, and I will definitely be putting it on my list of things to repurchase. Next up, I have this Dry Bar Southern Belle Volume Boosting Root Lifter. This was okay. I think I got this for free. Like a lot of times Ulta will just give out free samples if you spend so much money. The only thing with this is I kept looking at it and it kept saying volume boosting root lifter. So I would try and use it on days where my hair was dry, like right now, and try and give like some, some volume to my roots. However, every time I would use this, I would be reminded that you have to use this on damp hair. So I just always forgot that this has to be used on wet hair. This is the Living Proof Full Dry Volume and Texture Spray. Very similar effect. This you use on dry hair. So I just prefer this over this because I always forgot to use this on wet hair. This you can use on dry hair. I mean, it's empty, but it has like a little bit of air. I could just lift, spray a little and give a little bit of volume. When I straighten my hair, I feel like it gets a little bit flat. So that's what I primarily use it for. When my hair is wet and I'm putting products in, I use this. This is what I went through. This is a full size of the Aquage Uplifting Foam. I like this so much better than this. Granted, I went through a full size and this is just a mini, so maybe I didn't give it good enough of a shot. I've had this for years. I can't remember who recommended this to me. It's been that long. This lasted me forever, but I love it for some reason. It's eight ounces. I'm not a big hair person. I really just wash my hair, minimal products afterwards, straighten it. That's it. I don't know how to do things with hair. I wish I did. I keep asking my sister to teach me. She hasn't yet, but this product is probably one of the only products that I consistently use over and over again in my hair. And I actually can tell a difference when I use it with the amount of volume in my hair. When I went to Arizona in March, I actually got like a few little travel size hair products just so I would have them and not have to bring like the full size and I purchased the mini of this, so I still have that to go through, but I will absolutely be repurchasing this. I'm trying to get through a lot of my hair stuff because I really, I don't use a lot. I use like maybe three things, a heat protector, a foam like this, and then a dry shampoo. Like those are the three things that I need. I don't need all that like floof. So I'm trying to get through things, and I just plan on having those three things in my arsenal, but these two will definitely be the brands that I pick once I get to that level. This is just not for me. I feel like this just does a way better job. You do have to be careful and not over apply this or else your hair will be a little bit crunchy, but over applying it, like you would need a lot to over apply it, but it can happen. So just be aware of that. And that is gonna complete all the products that I used in December. Excited to see what I can get through in January, a whole nother year of just getting through products, dwindling down my collection, and really just having a core amount of things and not bins and bins of backups because nobody needs that in their life. But I hope this video was helpful. Hopefully some products you can think about, maybe try out yourself if you were interested in them. I'm gonna leave you here though, and I will see you in my next video. Bye, everyone.